I consider myself a computer user as opposed to a Windows, Linux, or Mac user. I actually use all three of them on a daily basis. If you're primarily a Linux user, it can be really handy to have a Windows VM around, especially if you're in an enterprise environment. Windows 10 came out in 2015 and was really easy to install on pretty much any PC or laptop from the last 10 years. Windows 11 came out in late 2021 and was much stricter with its installation requirements. Uh, it has such requirements uh, such as a TPM 2.0 security module and requiring UEFI BIO support. These requirements make Windows 11 trickier to install, not harder, just trickier to install. But I promise you, it can be done, and from the command line. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 in a KVM virtual machine. Stick with me. I've got a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for a notification. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Also, let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comments below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end so you catch the examples. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start by reducing the size of my face here so we can see the desktop. Now, there's three packages that you'll need to make sure are installed prior to moving forward. For Red Hat distributions, those are going to be EDK, TAC OVMF. SWTPM and libtpms. For Ubuntu and Udebian based, you're going to be using OVMF, SWTPM and libtpms. They're, they're pretty much the same with the difference of OVMF taking the place of EDK TAC OVMF. Now EDK2 OVMF or OVMF enables UEFI support for virtual machines. SWTPM is a TPM emulator. And then libtpms is a library providing TPM functionality for virtual machines. And all three of these were installed by default on both the Red Hat system that I run and the Ubuntu based system that I run. Now, the next thing that you're going to need to make sure you have is a Windows 11 uh, ISO image, which you can get from their website. I'll include this down in the, in the uh, show notes down below. And then also, you're going to need to get these Vert IO TAC Win uh, drivers. Um, you have two ver you have two versions that are available here. You have the just the regular ISO version, and you have the RPM version. The ISO version is going to be for Ubuntu or Debian, and then RPM will be for your um, for Red Hat distributions. So make sure you get the right one. And I'll also include a link down to this GitHub down in the show notes below. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to the command line and actually start going through the command. I've actually got it here. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the install. I've gone through this multiple times. I wanted to make sure that I had everything just right for this video. So now... We're going to be using the sudo vert install command. We've been we use that multiple times throughout this Linux virtualization series. So go check out the the video on installation if you cannot uh, recall or if you have any questions or want to know more. Then we're going to use tactac name to give it a name of Win 11. We're going to use tactac disk size 48 to go ahead and set aside 48 gigabytes of storage. Anywhere between 25 and 50 gigabytes should be sufficient. Then we're going to go ahead and do tac tac boot equals UEFI. And what that's going to do is it's going to set it to UEFI BIOS. And it's going to also set up a TPM 2.0 uh, device. And then we're going to use tac tac install and then boot dev equals CD-ROM. The reason we want to set this is this it's going to, uh, when we boot the first time, it's going to go ahead and give that CD-ROM boot priority. And it's going to boot directly from that versus any other device that we have set. TAC TAC V CPU, we're going to go ahead and give it, actually, you know what, let's give it four cores. I do have, this is a, I've got 16 total threads on this server, so I've got a bit here that I can do. So we're going to give it four instead, just because that'll make doing things today a little bit faster. And then we're going to go ahead and give it uh, eight gigabytes of memory. Uh, you want to stick between at least four to eight gigabytes of memory. Uh, don't go below that because you probably run into some performance problems. Uh, anything above that should be uh, should be more than sufficient. Then we're going to do tac tac cd rom, which we're going to go ahead and input the Windows 11 ISO. And then one of the things that I want to tell you here, and I, I can't remember if I've said this in previous videos, is that like when I when I set up anything uh, as far as needing ISOs or drivers or anything like that, I always put them in the uh, var lib libvert directory because that's where that's where that's where images are stored by default, so that libvert knows hey look i can go over here and get these get these here without any kind of issues if you put them in other locations it may create problems so just wanted to share that with you and then we're going to go ahead and do tac tac os variant 
and we're going to set that to win 10 because that's the most recent one they have there it should be the same for windows 10 or 11 doesn't matter and then the last thing that we're going to do is tac tac disk path equals and then the path to the vert io win drivers now you're probably wondering well why does he have like a cd-rom and then two discs because we got to go ahead and have the vert the vert io win driver set there at at the initial install because we need to be able to go through the install successfully it will not it will not succeed if you don't have the drivers in there with it. Now, if it bothers you to have the additional disk there, I believe it's start, I believe it's only like 512 megabytes. You can go ahead and remove the disk. I have a I have a video on adding and removing devices, so go check out that one if you have questions or concerns about doing that. So let's go ahead and execute this command. We're gonna put in our password here. Make sure you are you are the root or have pseudo privileges. Perfect. And because I'm using Red Hat, we're going to have to use a, a VNC client. And you'll see what I mean by finicky, because even though we set it to boot directly from the CD-ROM drive, and I tested this multiple times before starting this video, it still says that it can't find it. And if it does this, just go in here and select the CD-ROM and the boot devices. I'll actually escape. Yeah, and I'm sorry, boot manager, just go in there and you might have to do it multiple times. It just, again, it's Windows 11 and it's finicky. So I've had to do this sometimes five, six, seven, eight times. There it goes. Cool, now it's booting in, so just be patient with it. All right, and the install is pretty, pretty straightforward if you've ever installed Windows 11 before. I'll just quickly show you this because I want to show you that it does indeed work. All right, we're select Windows 11 Pro. Go ahead and accept the terms and conditions. We'll go ahead and come down here. See, there's that other drive that I was talking about. And here's the 48 gigs that we set aside. Cool, and we're gonna go ahead and let it do its thing here. I'm gonna go ahead, pause the video, and I'll come back once it's done. All right, here we go. It is now just finishing up the install. It's gonna go ahead and restart. All right, and if you're using a VNC client, you'll it'll actually kick you out and you'll have to go back in which is not an issue. There we go. This one, yeah, there we go. Sorry, I needed to make it full screen. Just to make it a little bit easier to see. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the video once more because we want to go ahead and let this go through. And here we are finally in there. It does take a little bit of time to boot this way, but we can go through this here. Good with the keyboard layout. It's going to check for updates. Just want to show you that this does indeed successfully work. Making sure you have the latest. It's funny because it says like, oh, make sure you have the latest, making sure you have the latest. And then when you go to into your actual install is it will still have updates there. So Windows never, never change or maybe needs to do all the changing. One of those two things. I'll leave it up to you guys. All right, and it says almost there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and pause it again, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just finish through the install because I'll have to sign into my Microsoft account. And then we can um, then we can go ahead and just kind of show you that it does indeed work. All right, so I will be right back. And here we go, we are in, awesome. Let's see what it actually shows once we are, if we go to the system information here. It's got my stuff here. Here's our eight gigabytes of RAM. It just says two processors. System type. Yeah, everything looks like everything pretty much transferred through. 
Here we go. We're on Windows 11 Pro. Awesome. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to go ahead and issue a control alt delete. And we're going to do a task manager. And performance. All right. It, and yep, I just I'm sorry, I thought I gave it four, but it looks like I only gave it two. So we've got the two there. We've got our eight gigabytes of RAM and awesome. Everything is there. So it's so amazing. We can easily install a Windows 11 uh, virtual machine in KVM and it'd be res as responsive as it is because it, it's pretty good. You know, it, even though we're using it over the network through a VNC viewer, this, this is pretty amazing performance as far as I'm concerned. So uh, make sure you check out the other videos in my Linux virtualization playlist. If you're caught up, check out this other video instead. Thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.